Okay. So, Lukas, you started as a content app, a community. Yeah. And often, once you have a big audience, you think about what else to do. Exactly. And do more. And since television is changing, broadcasting is changing, uh, you saw an opportunity and you do partner together. If you could quickly introduce yourselves yeah. um, and then we can open it up for our discussion. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. My name is Andrea Radrizzani. Uh, obviously, I, you can hear my accent. I'm Italian from Milan. I spent, I spent uh, many years in Asia building a, one of the uh, biggest TV sports rights company from 2007 to 2014. We became, uh, from the scratch, the third largest agency. And is that cricket or soccer? Eh? No, anything. It was a lot of soccer, football, uh, but any rights. We work with uh, uh, UEFA, FIFA, NBA, Premier League, uh, all NFL, all the major rights holders globally, trading rights to different media platforms. I remember since, uh, I think, 2004, I did my first uh, uh, Bundesliga distribution in Japan uh, on via mobile platform with, um, with mobile operator in Japan and Hong Kong and the rest of Asia. Uh, even before I opened then this agency then became um, successful from 2007 to 2014. Uh, then unfortunately then we sold in 2016 to Chinese government and um, unluckily the company went uh, not good as before. Um, but in the meantime, I set up. You came with the asset, or you sold the company and we sold went the majority of the company, and then you, con you continued. Uh, no, no, I, I was I already left the company before two years before we sold it in 2014, and I started a new venture for my um, investment company called Acer. So what do we do? We we operate in two different line of business, uh, very uh, close to each other with synergies. So we work in media and we work in sports. So we have different investment. Uh, for example, in media, we own, we launched in 2015 a, a company called Eleven Sports, um, which is uh, present now in six, seven territories, uh, in um, being a content provider of sports content. Like uh, in po in Poland, we are the most successful channel. We have four channels with the rights like so Bundesliga. You have your own channels also. Yeah, we have channels OTT with, across all the platforms. So uh, we have very agnostic um, approach. So, but is it TV based or internet based? TV, OTT, OTT everything. OTT. Yeah, yeah. So, what my belief is really that the content is the king. So, I don't mind which platform um, we use to reach the audience. In fact, uh, That's I'm actually. A perfect layover to yeah, exactly. uh, Lucas. Platform. I'm, you have a platform. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and now, <laughs> now, Andrea is helping you to bring content yeah. to your audience. Where, Maybe you say yeah. a few words about one football. Yeah. You know each other. You come to know from the very beginning. Yeah. Um, tell us about uh, one football, and then we can talk about the partnership. Yeah. So uh, one football is the leading uh, media platform for football fans. So what we do and did is we aggregated the most relevant content uh, for clubs, leagues, etc., around the globe for football fans on an application. Uh, in 2009, we were one of the first uh, 1,000 applications on iOS, so we were very early in the market, which gave us also the possibility to grow quite quickly. And um, by the best experience, we um, actually uh, were in the position to build a huge audience, reaching now around about 30 million um, users on a month. 30, 30, 30 million. 30 million on a monthly basis. On a monthly, and the, yeah. how much are uh, Germany? How many of them? Uh, Germany is four and a half million roundabout. Oh, wow, um, so you really. Yeah, so Sky has five point five. Does it make you bigger than Goal.com or some of the um, others? So um, if, if they would count the numbers in a fair way, yes. <laughs> uh, so, but uh, I think it's all a bit blurry and there's a lot of bullshit in the market w how you count users and how you don't count users so we're counting our users properly and once and not mobile website app and website right so but th i don't want to go there um, because it doesn't help in the end and that's the thing what we did many was people use it so. and the people use it exactly so we have uh, very high engagement numbers so our users come back to the app 60 times a month and so spend the Dow mao uh, ratio is is round about 40% which is that's, quite that's high. Facebook is at 55, 60. Yeah. So that's one of the highest ratios I've ever yeah. heard. Yeah, because it's very, I mean, football matches are happening every yeah. weekend. There's lots of news, etc. So loads of traction and content. And that's also the thing where we always said the media platform is literally the, 
our customer loyalty platform, so where we uh, create the customer relationship. And I, um, I do believe in media revenues, so advertising revenues, but they're hard to scale. And that's why we said um, our hunch is to go into direct-to-consumer businesses where the consumer buys um, a subscription, where the consumer buys a jersey, he buys a ticket, he travels. So these businesses are interesting for us. And so you are selling tickets no, also? No, I'm yet. just saying that this is kind of, these are the areas you can move into. And the reason why we've decided to go for the diff most difficult one is because it's the biggest one is the OTT part, so rights, um, so rights holders, because we saw loads of opportunities. If you see in the market that the audience, our audience is 75% below 34 years. That's the audience which is very hard to reach for the existing rights holders in almost every market. So for instance, Sky's average customer is 48 years old in Germany. So, and they have um, a vast majority of matches where they don't even reach single audiences yeah. below 24, 34. And that's the opportunity. And um, Now you're working together. When yeah. did you start talking or when did you meet? Yeah. We, I mean, we wanted to I, be earlier. I had this, yeah, I had this idea for a long time to uh, do the opposite that everybody's doing because basically all the platform and channel try to bring customers to themselves. I, I believe in the content. The content is king, so the platform for me is a commodity and uh, I want to do the opposite. So bring my content everywhere possible beside our own brand also to use other platform to reach uh, and unbundle the content. So to democratize the content and make it available in, without subscription. So I, I had this uh, idea and uh, finally we, uh, we, we managed to, to meet a few months ago, I think what, six months ago? Yeah. Yeah. How long? Nine months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, months yeah. and there was a love at first sight, and now we, we, we shared the idea, and immediately we, we believed that could work. So we, ta we started this season, doing the season to implement integration between the live feed uh, of our games on La Liga in UK and the platform, so it can target a audience of uh, La Liga Spanish football audience in UK and uh, promote our games in a pay-per-view model. So, What does it cost to watch a game of the UK Premier League? Um, so that was in UK, we were at 299 yeah. uh, pounds per match. And the thing is, and that's the hypothesis, because literally we are on the same trajectory like what Spotify did, that they were closing deals with rights holders and um, literally on a revenue share basis then to participate in the revenues you, you, you gain. And oh, you split the revenue in a very fair way. Uh, it's, it's confidential, yeah. but uh, uh, um, I get the best, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, of course, as a content owner, you need to keep a uh, majority, but they, it's an important partnership because to reach the, a new audience, a different audience, and people that they don't like to subscribe and stuck in a deal or to pay every month. So I think it's an right. alternative way to disrupt the market. And in fact, I really believe in this strategy that I'm helping uh, Lucas to be introduced to other rights holders, other partners. You, you want to make content. the platform more attractive by offering yeah. more, right? Yeah, exactly. But so, I mean, what's very important is because Andrea's history is, I mean, he is owning 11 sports with access to markets and access to rights. But the reason why we are literally partnering is because Andrea has access to the overall market. Because um, our objective for One Football is that we're not only talking about 11 sports in UK or in Italy or in Portugal and Belgium. Want it all? Yeah, we're going for uh, for all the markets, and we're talking literally at the moment to so all it's the a rights holders. Exclusive agreement. Exactly. And. The Premier League in the UK is a very high-profile one. Yep. Yeah. Um, these rights, the OTT rights, I mean, isn't that complicated? Do you have... No, at the moment, Premier League is distributed in UK exclusively by Sky and BT. So no, the Primera División. It was no, the no, we, Spanish League. I was league. saying the Spanish League. The Spanish Madrid, League Barcelona. in UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have yeah. the, the yeah, OTT we, rights yeah, yeah, yeah. for the Spanish League? We have all the rights, for, including broadcasting, for the, for the UK. Uh, but this, this ah. system... Is that we use it, we tested in the UK, but now we started also in another third tier division in Italy. So I think the model is for good content, but also niche content. For example, in Italy, we started with third division that is very niche, but there is a lot of fans in 60 different cities and they cannot access very easily to the game everywhere. So they can come to our platform or they can reach a single game view via the, when they're following the statistics, the live score. Yeah. On, on how, how is it working, Lucas? Are people using it? Yes. Or? 
we've so seen the first phase. Exactly. So uh, the first thing was, and I don't know if we have the video. We did the. Minimum, we have a video. We did. Uh, there was one slide where we showed the minimum viable product, which was literally the objective to give a customer um, that the customer gets access to the match within just 20 seconds. So he comes to the app, he buys the match and watches it, so that we literally kill the friction in between with the whole um, um, subscription funnel. Yeah. And that's, that's the one thing. And the second one was because we're talking to a very young audience uh, of young users, they want flexibility. So they don't want to have subscriptions for one month, 12 month, um, and, and bundle deals. And feel a credit card. Exactly. It's an so impulsive it needs How to many be credit cards did you collect? Um, a lot. Oh, you don't need. Yeah, so it's I mean, starting, in huh? the end. No, you don't need credit card. It's you can buy with the in app uh, purchase. In app purchase. In by Apple and Google. It's very easy. Ah, fantastic. That's yeah. why it's um, actually, I don't know if you have the video, but it's very, very, very easy. Do we have the video? Uh, we have a video. Yeah, so literally, the user clicks on the match, goes on the watch tab, goes on the buy now button. So hot. Here. And then the verification. Um, and after the verification, you can watch the match. So, and there's literally no... Can you watch it on your television or just yeah. on the iPhone? Yeah, yeah, Via Chromecast or iTunes, yes, you or can... Maybe you can play it again, but it's, you see it, it's 20 seconds. Wow. So, and that's, that's the beauty of this product. Is Instant availability. Exactly. Fantastic. And, and then what we can do, because we know we have 100,000 active Barcelona fans in UK. You we can send the them match. a push. Can even send them a we can them a, a push two hours before the match and say, now you can watch the match for 2.99 on one football. And that's how we get them into conversion. And that's why it's so interesting, because we have all our user base segmented by clubs per country that literally also a, a, a Dutch league in Germany is highly interesting for us, even though we only have 200,000 people following it. So Andrea might only be your first partner. No, Andreas is yeah with 11 sports, but Andrea is access to That's rights holders. That's the thing. We are partnering with one football to help ah, them to get more. Ah, you're helping with the whole exactly. with the whole discussion yeah. side. Yeah. Okay, well let's talk about the sports rights mark for yeah. a sec. Um, I remember Deutsche Telekom was bidding on sports rights. Yeah. Now we have the big American platforms, Netflix, Amazon, uh, yeah. Facebook, Facebook as rumored. Um, are the sports rights getting out of reach expensive for you? Because uh, those platforms, for them, I mean, Netflix is one of the biggest, if not the biggest. No, they've always been expensive. Uh, obviously, the, the digital platform can um, um, profile better the audience. They can reach the audience differently. They can... Uh, they have a bigger they, audience. Yeah, I they mean, have, 30 million have, is yeah. a lot, and it's soccer affine. But then you don't go to Netflix, Amazon for everything, right? You have your trusted yeah. sports exactly. environment with your and social... You have, and you have, the, and that's the main point, on Facebook, on, on Instagram, Snapchat, they're horizontal platforms and you don't have data and yeah. stats. A football fan wants the table, the lineups, the, the statistics, but, the scorers. It depends also on, uh, generally depends also on the agenda of each uh, giant and technology company. I think, for example, Amazon is using sports rights investment mainly to defend and promote their prime um, subscription. Um, so the video part is the element to make lo create loyalty and, uh, and stability with the audience that they, where they make money, which is the delivery. Um, Netflix at the moment didn't show any interest in uh, sports, just focusing on entertainment. Facebook, uh, I see they tried to do some acquisition right. in some markets. For example, they invested in the Premier League rights in India, Champions League in uh, South America. But I think Facebook will move seems to be moved more as a platform and aggregate content from other publishers. So, um, my opinion, the publisher will have a, a great opportunity because the proliferation of a platform gives them opportunity to syndicate the content differently across all these platforms. But, but what you will always have, like in, in Germany, you have a no single buyer rule. So, there is not just Facebook in the position to buy all Bundesliga content. There always has to be a second yeah. one. Also, that the Facebooks of this world, whoever goes into those tenders, they, don't, they won't buy all rights globally in all countries. Because that's too much of an investment. The, the rights mark globally for football is around about 20, 30 billion. And that, then you have costs of streaming, of people, of production, etc. So uh, maybe they, and that, that's my hunch, and I mean, we discussed a few times that some of the big platforms buy rights in some of the countries for marketing purposes and retention drivers but not 
globally uh, in and also market. it's very different than entertainment so in entertainment you have titles like hollywood that they are good everywhere in sports you need to tailor made the strategy in every single market every sports can be different uh, interests not like baseball in japan or in general soccer. the product sucks right i mean yeah. if you are a soccer you fan mean? and you are traveling and you want to watch your favorite club playing yeah. I had a lot of friends visiting in Switzerland. Yeah. Then they start installing VPNs, virtual, exactly. yeah, so they yeah, can hide their IP address. I mean, the experience, I and that's why I welcome. But in three to five years, you can do Probably. all that. Yeah. And for me, they, they should yeah. also, uh, the leagues and the rights holders should start to think to sell syndicated rights by language, not just by territory, but by language. This will help a lot of the consuming Well, that's a good thing. You don't really... Language is not a barrier, right? You just watch them sweat. Exactly. Right? exactly. The sportsmen. And, and the, the reason go. why, I mean, the, the rights holders are literally also so interested in this because they see that one football... I mean, our biggest audience is in Brazil, for instance. Then it's Germany. Then it's Mexico. Then oh, it's really? Italy. So we're... Germany's so you're only... number one in Brazil is what you do? Um, yeah. I mean, they're, 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 and, and Germany is only 15% of the... the one five. Of one five, 15% of the overall traffic. So that's why we have a very valuable um, value proposition for all these rights holders. And it's incremental revenues because they're not reaching this audience. And that's what they all understand. So what you are for One Football, helping them to get the content, it, yeah. the, the federations like the UEFA, etc., is doing this for the clubs to help the clubs to distribute the content. Do you see a chance with the new model that the clubs are taking a more direct stake in the business? So, I mean, I, ca I can just say that, you know, it's not officially announced or whatsoever but man city is one of the is the first club who has an account on one football um, so that they are distributing their content directly via one football and our objective is also to get more clubs out and that they actually use us because they already see that we're driving more traffic to them than facebook and, and other platforms content. is that right you travel yeah. more traffic yeah, because we have the hardcore fans The real fans. The real fans. So if, if you have, I don't know, on Facebook 60 million followers, that's bullshit. It's like if I give you downloads. It's less than 1% is engaged. And engaged is also a like button. Yeah, with your Dao Mao ratio of 40%, they're very engaged, as yeah. you mentioned earlier. Yeah. But the clubs, they understand what's happening right now. They're getting digitally savvy, so to yeah. say. What's your, your view? Do you, do you still have... Uh, long discussions on the rights with them? Is yeah, it the rights, no, I mean, on the rights, the majority of the league control the rights itself, not the clubs. So the content for the, owned by the clubs and distributed by the club are around the game. So pre-game, post-game, interview, uh, behind the scene. So I think normally the club are focused a lot on creating content for social media, um, more as a promotion and engagement and driving interest for their sponsor rather than monetization. Who is going to win the next World Cup? I found this very interesting. Ghana. You, you Last time there were all the small teams. <laughs> yeah. Why is that, by the way? Is it getting... Uh, are the big teams don't care anymore about these... Uh, You're seriously asking that question when an Italian and a German sit on stage? What do I mean? I mean, what do you mean? We want to stay friends. Soccer, you I have very, very, I have very yeah. sweet memories about a few years ago. Exactly. Yeah. In this city. You, you lost, I think. Yeah, in this city. Yeah. Against France. Exactly. Yeah, France. But you won against Germany in the semi final. I'm enough old to remember very well. Yeah. Mm. Do you have also secondary content? Meaning, like, okay, let's watch at the top. Let's watch the top 10 goals of a specific player. And you have a library? Is that like a. Is a back-end catalog, the, is that important? I mean, we can have access to that. I think now, this first phase, we are focusing on live, yeah. and then we will see how we can top up. But this kind of rights is easy to access, uh, but it's difficult to monetize. So uh, we focus on the live, which is the majority, the core attraction. But, but what, 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 we did, what we did is we took the third Italian division in Italy, yeah. and mean. that was so successful because There's huge audiences following like Siena, Pienza, etc. But they don't get access to that content easily. So and we provide them with that. That's why I'm saying it's not only about Champions League and Bundesliga and Premier League. It's about 
second yeah. division, third division, cups, etc., where you reach smaller audiences, but very in a very targeted way, and they are in the willing and in the position to buy access to, um, flexible. The, the last question is going to be the most complicated one. Um, yeah, Maybe. is Sky, which is like a subscription-based cable yeah. offering, um, yeah, they get, what, what is the Sky subscription now, 40, 50 euros per month? Yes. Or yeah, they have a day pass for 9.99. So, so they're already moving into that direction. Pay per view type. Yeah, kind yeah. of. Yes. Yeah. That's why. So at the end, since there's more accessibility cross-platform, the revenues for the leagues should go up. When you negotiate with the federations, the leagues on the rights, are they becoming greedy and they ask you for too much money for the OTNT? Is there a cannibalization risk? It depends on the distribution strategy of the league and the competition. At the moment, for me, the, the fragmentation of the platform being a multiple uh, choice, but not, not bigger competition. So. It's very important to have a non-exclusive approach to generate more value. Otherwise, the value could go down. I mean, in fact, the last Premier League, for example, in the UK, has 20% decline in the domestic market. So the, I think they need, the leagues, they need to now uh, understand how to, they, like, how can create a new strategy of distribution using more platform to have a better final result. Because if But you look at Spotify, it's all about accessibility and the price came exactly. down, but the usage went up. Exactly. Is that so, what's going to happen here? Yes, because again, if you look at um, Sky's audience, and I don't, you know, it's just an example, and the average age is 48, and you see that it's public information that a lot of matches are not viewed by the young audience. You see that moving into that direction, we believe that it's incremental revenue and the, the literally the, the, the cake gets bi bigger and it's not cannibalization. For sure, there will always be some kind of cannibalization, but the main driver will be incremental revenues. Wonderful. I found this very, very interesting. I'm not a big soccer fan, I have to tell you the truth. Yeah, that never that was my, our biggest problem over the last years. I was no needed, problem. Yeah, no, no, challenge. Challenge, yeah. <laughs> opportunity, opportunity. Exactly. Opportunity. <laughs> well, thank you so much. You. I Marco, wish you, you both very, very well for your partnership. Become the next Spotify, the Spotify of sports, maybe. Thank you. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Amazing Thank you. innovation. Thank you. Thank you.